Catherine Howard seemed to be the opposite of Anna Cleves. She was either 18 or 19 when she met Henry. She was not described as beautiful, but she was graceful and sweet looking, and Henry liked her the moment he saw her. She was raised at her uncle's house before she was taken to the Duchess of Norfolk's house. Today, Catherine is usually seen as a sexy teenager. Catherine's story can almost be seen as a warning to young women at the time, or as a tragic romance. Catherine would have several such romances. Catherine's first romance occurred here in the Duchess's home when she was barely a teenager. A music teacher named Henry Mannix took a liking to her, but Catherine would swear he only touched her. The two were separated, not because of what he had done to her, but because he was not a good enough match. Catherine's next romance was very sexual. Her lover was Francis Durham, and the two called each other husband and wife. It is even believed that they planned on getting engaged. But when Francis left for Ireland, Catherine's feelings for him cooled, and she was sent to live at her uncle's house. There, she met Thomas Culpepper, a member of the King's Privy Chamber. Catherine became one of Anne of Cleves' ladies-in-waiting, living in the Queen's household. Henry would visit her often at night. On July 28th, Henry married Catherine. But marriage to the king wasn't all fun and games for Catherine. Henry couldn't exercise as much as he liked. He caught a fever in the spring of 1541. He wouldn't let his young wife visit him when he was sick. He was no longer that young, handsome prince he had been when he had married his first wife. While Henry was recovering, it is believed that this was when Catherine renewed her friendship and even possibly began a sexual relationship with Thomas Culpepper. Thomas Culpepper was a man with a reputation, at least, as a bad boy. He, or his brother, is supposed to have raped a park keeper's wife. But if Catherine's relationship with Culpepper was sexual, she did little to hide it. A letter was written telling Henry of Catherine's history. Francis Durham, Catherine's former lover, was hauled into the tower. When he confessed and implicated Culpepper, then Culpepper, too, was taken in. Henry was furious when he learned of Catherine's history. On the 22nd, Catherine was stripped of the title of queen, and two days later, she was found guilty. There is a story that tells that Catherine raced through the palace trying to find Henry, to beg for grace, to beg for mercy. Her cries for help were in vain. She would never see him again. In February, she was transferred to the tower. She was told that she was to die. Catherine made one request that she may practice, putting her head in the block. This might have been done to calm her nerves, or to put it gruesomely, she wanted to have her head cut off with one blow of the axe or the sword, because others were not so lucky. On Monday, the 13th of February, 1542, she was taken to be executed. Folklore says that she could barely stand, and that her last words were how she would rather die call Pepper's wife than a queen. This is probably false. She is supposed to have been composed on the stand, asking for mercy, asking for the audience to pray for her soul. Then she placed her head on the block and died with a single stroke of a sword. Henry would marry one more time to a very different woman.